I think I will continue from Jan's conversation with Michel and Etel, uh, who were asked what public space is or means for them. And Michel said that public space is a space we share, and Etel said uh, that public space is space for everybody. Uh, and now Anna continued that the sp public space is a space of conflict. And Axel, you somehow evaded the question. I mean, you didn't uh, particularly explain what the spa public space is. But as the title of your lecture was that uh, I understood that public space is somewhere between the imaginary and the existing. So maybe you should first start uh, with a little bit more elaborating on this notion. Um, yeah, well, on, on the last project, you can um, you could see that uh, the public space can be a space that you can appropriate and that you can um, kind of configure for your needs, and that um, yeah, that is possible. I mean, you always have to go within the rules. But I would also agree to Anna or Anya. Anna, <laughs> Anna, uh, that it's uh, a space of conflict also, or that it's uh, like one, um, one big uh, purposes of public spaces is uh, to express, um, to express um, yeah, whatever needs, desires, or whatever. So if, uh, if you look at demonstrations, for instance, you have uh, whatever, some farmers who want to, to be seen by the public or by the whatever, TV or whatever, um, uh, when they're protesting against something. So if they would do it on the, somewhere in the landscape or in the, on, on the farms, nobody would care. If they go take their, is it trucks or the tractors? <laughs> if they take them to the city and make a, a big demonstration, then they can express uh, on, a, on a totally different level and it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, seen much further. And, uh, so, so this is also what, uh, what the public space is uh, about and for. Anna, uh, would you elaborate a little bit more on the first two projects that you show? It was uh, the apartment and the gap. Mm -hmm. And I think they do question, um, or I would say trigger the question of what is public and what is private? And in the first case of the performance on the Targ Bana Jelacica, I think this question was raised really, how to say, in a very subtle way for people on the square who were not a part of a performance but only observers. It meant actually now defined space as an apartment space of some inhabitants. Uh, how did they actually, besides that they were observing this space, how did they react that the space was then at a certain moment of the performance, it was actually closed. How did they react to this notion? Because we know public space usually, or nowadays, every more and more time gets, uh, more and more times gets uh, fenced and closed for the general public. I mean, or maybe to say for everyone. Yeah, well, the artist also um, uh, took in guests. So they were some people who would, uh, visit them in their apartment. So it was also in a way as every private space is uh, uh, in a certain way open for intrusion. So this was also a space which uh, did, um, uh, it did um, let the interaction between uh, outside and inside happen. So they, uh, they weren't just passive audience, they really could interact with the performers and but of course, as you say, it does stay, uh, it, I mean, it is a fenced uh, off space within a public zone. Um, but I mean, since the project wasn't long, uh, wasn't there for a long time, so it was uh, uh, removed after one day because of this uh, police uh, <laughs> anecdote and because of this um, public order um, uh, um, complaint by citizens. Uh, so the reactions weren't very radical in a way. They weren't like protesting why they, their square is being, a part of their square is being fenced off. But also uh, I think it has to do with the fact that 
uh, when you once uh, you notice that something is an art project, there is a certain um, a, a certain distance which happens with the people because they somehow think, okay, if it's art, then it's something that I don't understand, and they are like li little a bit weirdos. But let them be that way. If it's temporary, I won't mind. And then again, you have people. I mean, it was the reaction of the people which led to the. Uh, to the closing down of the project and removing it from the main square because they were, um, as I said, um, uh, complaining about uh, performers uh, have going to toilet on the public square. But uh, maybe also it's uh, interesting to, to mention that it's uh, uh, a period when in Croatia this kind of public art projects and intervention and this kind of use of public space is only starting to happen. Before, because before that, it was first it was the civil war and then it was the, this post-war era where the public space was heavily condensed with a lot of national uh, rhetorics and uh, a national uh, need for a national representation for this newly, newly formed state of Croatia. So this was also, in a way, something that people at the time didn't expect to happen. Okay. Uh, maybe you should explain a little bit more, or at least mm -hmm. uh, finish the story of the other uh, art project. Yeah, the other project, uh, which happened 10 years later. Uh, so the, the thing was that the artist uh, Dušica Dražić uh, came to us with an idea to live for two weeks in an apartment, private apartment, without uh, entrance doors. So we uh, found an apartment which we could rent for this purpose, which was also not easy because you can't just uh, call a rentier and say, I would rent your apartment, but I will remove the front doors. So everything without a security guard, without a policeman, so everything that's inside basically is here, free for everybody to use it in any way they think they should. Uh, so we uh, found like a friend of ours, uh, person from the artistic cultural scene who was willing also to, uh, his role was also very important because he was willing to give away his apartment for two weeks uh, and the doors were removed. So they were not only open, but they were completely removed, uh, the whole um, the plane of the door and the um, uh, frame of the door was uh, hidden with knauf so that it's really like a seamless uh, opening in the opening in the wall. Uh, and she uh, moved in and she was living there um, like her normal life. She wasn't there all the time to, so to say, guard the space, but she would go out to have a coffee, to meet someone, to buy groceries for lunch, uh, etc. So what, what she wanted to, to question is, uh, how will this, uh, what, what will happen then with this space? If everybody can come in, and it was announced uh, also within the PR of the festival and in uh, newspapers and so on. If everybody can come in, what will happen? Will it uh, be completely out of control? Will it be a zone of uh, danger, a zone of um, different kind of uh, violence, uh, attacks or whatever? Or will it be an uh, opportunity to see if uh, one can create a community which is completely self-organized, which controls itself by its own rules, which it has to invent on the place, on the spot, in that very moment, and which is which don't, of course, apply outside of this uh, uh, apartment. Uh, so what happened is that uh, the reactions were really positive, and uh, for example, the first day two backpackers from Switzerland came. They heard that there is an apartment without doors, and they needed a place to stay, and they just came with their uh, luggage and stayed there for a few days. And uh, also a lot of neighbors uh, started to visit her and they were really, because we were also afraid how the neighbors would react. Because it's, very un it's a very unusual thing to do, to remove your front door and it immediately evokes some kind of danger and something bad will happen, uh, it will be robbed or something like that. So we were really afraid that the neighbors will really complain and be against the project. But they were very uh, open to the project and they were very protective about this artist. And that like uh, uh, having coffee with her, checking if she's all right, uh, asking her for a lunch, like this really cozy old fashioned neighborhood relations uh, emerged. Um, and also like the girl who lived next door because it, it was the last floor and there was only one apartment on the same floor. After, one, uh, after a while she decided to open her own doors. 
She said, like, this is a great experiment because she studied architecture and at the time she was reading, uh, writing her thesis about uh, the openings uh, on uh, the buildings and it was a really interesting experiment for her as a student of architects to also try to somehow um, take over this practice and see what happens uh, in, this, in terms of social. Okay, so these unpredictable conditions, did you... Uh, talk to neighbors in advance or the project just happened, you know, with doors down? Did you have any yeah, conversations before or...? We didn't ask for the permission of the neighbors, uh, but the owner of the apartment uh, had some talks like to just to prepare some of them who are a lot, who, like older people who are spending a lot of time at home and who are on the floor just beneath uh, the fifth floor on the fourth floor. So he talked a little bit with some of them, but we didn't uh, ask for permission and we didn't uh, talk with all of them before. Okay, because I would like to ask you, uh, Axel, about um, how do you start the project of participation with neighbors or with the local inhabitants? You as a foreigner come to a country, let's say, okay, you come to Italy, it's Europe. And how much in advance do you work with a local organization who actually organizes the whole event? And how do you engage people then in the whole process? Um, in the uh, Cantiere Barca project, it was crucial that uh, it was really well prepared by Artitolo, who... Um, who talked to a lot of people in advance and uh, yeah, they made the whole setting. It's not possible to do something like this, you know, coming from Berlin and uh, going there and say, okay, let's do something together. If, if we do it uh, ourselves, so, so that's actually crucial if we are invited. And there's also quite a few examples where curators invite us um, to do a participative project. It was very trendy in the last years. Um, and uh, they don't see what it means for them to, in terms of a lot more work than just putting an object anywhere. <laughs> so um, if we do it ourselves, we need a lot of time in advance, or we need to come again and again, and sometimes it doesn't work at all, because we were just talking about the project in Belgrade, which was a very, um, for me, it, it was really a world in, in this neighborhood where I couldn't get access to anybody. Um, although there, was, uh, there were a lot of local people who could talk with the people and all this, but it was just, uh, uh, it was not possible. It was easy to, to find people with workshops from the art scene, architectural students, whatever, but I was not interested in that. I wanted to work with people in the neighborhood, but it was not possible. So, so this is, um, and then maybe other level is that uh, we, during uh, over the many years, we, we we developed tools or we found tools and know quite well what what works, what doesn't. For instance, uh, these building workshops where we build furniture, it's uh, it's a quite easy tool. I mean, if you set it up, like once we just set this um, um, building workshop up in a public space in Barcelona and. Um, Somehow, this kind, you know, if you can, if you see something and you can, if you, if you can come and do it yourself, and then people get attracted. So, so this is a tool to get into communication with the people, also for to, to do other things with them later on, to, to build up trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's also maybe one more example in Halle Neustadt, um, um, in a, in an, quite rundown area. Um, um, we also tried to, to get um, a, a participation um, process started with, uh, with young people from the area and was for one month it was, wasn't possible at all and then um, it was Benny and Matthias at that time they found out that they were, would go into the cinema to the 8 mile movie of uh, Eminem again and again. So what they then started uh, was uh, every Friday they made this uh, rap battle like um, in, a, in a little club and then um, it started to become really um, yeah, famous in this area and there were more and more of the kids coming and after that there was some trust built up and then after that you could build the hotel rooms with them and all kinds of things. Yeah. So. Uh, because I just remembered Jan said before uh, in a previous conversation that this 
many times these kind of short of actions are not sustainable because there is impa impact for, let's say, a really short period of time. But I think in this project of Barca, you really managed to build up a community that can take on the project on their own. Because I think, I mean, we are with students, we are working sometimes in Africa, building schools, and we always ask ourselves questions whether those project, uh, projects are developmental enough to build a community that would be on their own able to develop further. So I think in this case in uh, Barca, Cantera Barca, you managed to build a, a community, I, or did I misunderstand? I, hope, I don't know. I hope Jan didn't show it last time, the Barca, did he? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, as I, as I said, like it was very, very connected to the people, to the curators, in, in, in this case, yeah. So they are still kind of investing their time in building community yes. life there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe now we have a chance to discuss also a little bit about specific situation in Yugoslavia. We are coming from, at least we two are coming from the countries with a socialist political system. And I'm interested, how do you, Anna, perceive the change of public space, understanding of public space within uh, the context of this change, of this transition. And then I would like to talk also about uh, the processes of privatization, not only of uh, spaces, but also of uh, privatization of uh, companies, of businesses, and so on. By and by doing this, of course, we get in the cities large areas of industrial uh, buildings which are abandoned and so on. So maybe first, what is your opinion? Uh, what are your observances on the change of perception of public space in two systems? Well, I think it's a very interesting but also too complex question for me now to give an answer, uh, especially since I'm, I was born in uh, 1985. So I really don't have any experience of really living and earning for life in Yugoslavia. Um, of course, it's very interesting for me to research the history of Yugoslavia and how things functioned back then, but it's uh, somehow uh, my specific perspective and I'm also not an expert in this, so it's hard for me to say. But I think the difference between uh, public space then and public space now, I think it's uh, not that easily uh, to be compared because uh, we must have in mind that back then we were talking about public property and the uh, private property was existing but it was very uh, restricted and it was uh, perceived uh, and conceptualized uh, and taught completely different than today. So I think that the classical uh, opposition, private public, that we use today in our contemporary social economic situation is somehow not functioning for that era. I think applying it um, uh, for the period back then may uh, bring us to some wrong, uh, so to some dead end. Maybe it would be more appropriate to really research uh, how this whole idea of uh, public goods uh, and the public properties functioned back then. Uh, and I mean, for example, one interesting topic for me that we developed through some programs in Block, we had a workshop, for example, on that, this uh, idea with the Serbian architect and researcher Dubravka Sekulic, where she was dealing with the topic of the housing uh, in socialism, of the uh, right to the uh, right uh, right to, to housing, of uh, socialist apartments which were state owned and given to uh, people, to workers, to uh, lowest classes, and so on. So even this idea that we have now that our private apartment, which also links to Dushica's project, the gap, that our private apartment is our own sacred private property. Uh, a lot of people today in Zagreb live in uh, apartments which were inherited uh, from the socialism and which were given to their uh, fathers or grandparents by the state. So I think it's just too complex to, to, to put it in this binary opposition, private public. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you were, like in your lecture, you were talking about this, uh, this wharf or the ship um, building company, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I've heard about um, the housing, also the city development, was um, about 
like um, former Yugoslavia and many areas, that um, there was like many of the companies, these collectives, and they had boards. So, so they, they would decide um, how the surplus of the production was spent. So it would lead to, if there was a very successful company, it would lead to prosperity in the whole area of a, of a city, but not in a, in a way that we also know in, in capitalism somehow, but, um, but in, a way, uh, in a very direct and very de democratic way that um, they could decide also with their families, okay, we need a new school, and then they would build it and things like this. Can you tell some yeah, more a, about that? Because I a, think it's very interesting. Thank you. It's a, a model called um, workers' self-organization, radničko samoupravljenje, self-management, yeah, better self-management, uh, which was active uh, in Yugoslavia, and it's, um, it's a concept which is very much researched and very debated, and it's very, very interesting, especially from today's perspective and today's problem, problem, problems that we have. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was, it's a, a very interesting concept, but uh, in many cases it was just fake. And these uh, workers' boards didn't really function on the uh, uh, radically democratic uh, principles, but were more like uh, staged in a way, and it was in the end, uh, after all, controlled by few people. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the idea is bad. Uh, I mean, uh, the whole story of uh, Yugoslavia is uh, uh, a, a very complex one, and it has a lot of uh, good ideas which uh, were also functioning within a system which was in a way hybrid because it was a socialist state, but uh, on the outside, uh, in international relations, it functioned as a capitalist state. So in the end, it was uh, ruined by the debt uh, from the MMF, from the World Monetary Fund, uh, which, because it loaned money from it. So, but not to go maybe further into this complex story, but uh, uh, self-governing is a very self-management man, self is a really interesting concept, uh, which was uh, brought, if I'm not mistaken, um, later in Yugoslavia in the early 70s, uh, in 1974. Uh, and, hmm? Okay, but then after the constitution, it was uh, like, the more strongly... First self-management was introduced in 1954. Okay. okay. Maybe <laughs> older colleagues can say more about Just re it. re thought re re every five years, mm -hmm. let's say, in Yugoslavia, but it was, mm -hmm. it was very... Very, very uh, early. But the constitution of the 1974 brought these uh, uh, associations of associated work uh, uh, imposed this as a mode of organization, which was like maybe a new, a new version of self-management. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think it also opens up the questions uh, about should the workers decide on the surplus value or should the state apparatus decide on the surplus value? This is like maybe uh, like a debate around uh, self-management, uh, and when it comes also to critique of self-management. Yeah, maybe another possibility: <coughs> the local, uh, the, the involved, the local people, no? the citizens of, um, that get affected by it, no? mm -hmm. like a smaller unit democratic process. But we are also talking about when we're talking about the people. It's, a, it's also about to, to find ways and tools um, for, for to to not because now it said okay the, all the apartment buildings are built 50% 50, 50 will be um, state funded it will not happen like this everybody knows but even even if it would not um, um, be any close to the needs of uh, or needs and wishes of the people um, that so. Mm. But I think only one more very important thing is the position of the worker and the position of the work in this system. Because, I mean, now uh, the uh, history of uh, uh, workers self-managing is uh, somehow very popular and uh, you have some associations in Zagreb and some unions which are working precisely with the workers who are working in factories, such as, for example, the, the 3rd of May uh, shipyard. 
uh, who are uh, trying to somehow take over the factory in a way to try to find ways of uh, how to legally uh, gain power over the uh, management of the of the company because what was happening during the 90s and 2000s that you had boards which were imposed from the outside uh, usually from the political and economical elites uh, who were then deciding about the the future of the factory and they weren't interesting uh, interested in um, fostering uh, production and uh, growth of the uh, uh, factory, but they were uh, very often interested in getting the property, the real estate of the factory, because these pro uh, factories had huge real estates in very attractive zones of the city. So they would actually ruin the, the production, uh, lay off workers, and then sell uh, or make uh, uh, apartment buildings uh, on the plot of the former factory and thus gain a fast profit. So now, in order to stop this uh, process, uh, there is a, a lot of debate about how workers now could organize uh, themselves in order to really um, influence the decisions, the crucial decisions uh, uh, concerning their factories. So, of course, it is uh, always uh, the question of surplus value and how it uh, returns to the public, but also I think the disposition of the worker uh, and him being able to control his uh, working conditions is also very important. Yeah. Well, we have a, uh, a couple of, exa uh, of examples like this also here in Slovenia. It's called uh, sort of, I mean, now they're called new cooperatives, worker cooperatives, who are trying to take over the production means. But I think Mateusz is already signaling that we should stop <laughs> now for... Uh, I think we should... Uh, then maybe only ask if somebody... All the connection to, to city development, according to that, 